what is team teaching? Two, three faculties come together and teach a concept. Suppose there is biotechnology, right? Biotechnology, biomedical engineering, biochemistry, isn't it? These are the subjects where somebody is strong at chemistry, somebody is strong at biology. There may be chemistry people, maths people with chemistry come, must have come for biochemistry. Also people from math must have come for biochemistry. If these two teachers come, both conceptions will become better understandable for students. So like that, depending upon our expertise, subject is taught by the expert teachers in combination. Then what happens? Learning will be more effective. More so, I will give one more example for that. When number of teachers are there, the stimulus variation is there. What is stimulus variation? No monotony. I am only talking last one hour, you get bored. If two, three teachers are there, you know, the way they present, the way they move in the classroom, the way they explain, everything, you know, there is a variety in the classroom. More so, you have expertise in the classroom about every detail of it. If three different aspects are there in a concept, three teachers will come and teach. This not only helps the student, but also teachers to learn from each other. Because otherwise, you are not strong in that aspect of your content. So you will become strong by listening to your fellow teachers. So both the teacher and students will get benefit out of this team teaching. And there will be variety, there will be more expertise, there will be more clarity, there will be more learning, more effective, more variety. You know, what all you want, you have all this in this team teaching. So group of teachers plan, organize and come to the classroom. They teach you, they take feedback, they learn from you, you learn from them. Mutually, they learn from each other. So like that, this whole benefit will happen with the team teaching. What is this TV video presentation? I don't know what is that they have given, TV video presentation. So whatever it is, technology or multimedia when you use, videos when you use, you know, you have today all TSAC is there, Swayam MOOC are there, Swayam Prava is there. Like that, you have so many repositories are there. YouTubes are there, in number of videos are there. If you just open YouTube, everybody opened their channel, they started teaching net. Okay. So you listen to them, don't listen to the videos which are wrongly explained. Take some authoritative person's videos only. Don't take all the videos. Don't read all such books also. Books also don't read every book. You go to the authoritative books, be it class books you take, then they will be more authentic, authentic and authoritative and subject-wise correct. Not any book you read. Good publisher book you read. Then it will be more authentic. So like that you have, these are, they said, these are the large group methods because when you have a larger group like this, I can't have a discussion method here. Very difficult. Discussion should have small number. Then we can go with the discussion. If it is a huge group, then we will be not able to do justice to the discussion because everybody will not get the chance to express or say their opinions. So small groups are required if it is discussion method. So this team teaching, you have video presentation. Small group are mixed strategy. The other side is students. Let me take students, then come back to the mixer. What are all their tutorials? What are tutorials? They say no. In NAC, they ask you, there should be tutorials. For whom the tutorials are arranged? What is tutorial method? For the low, slow learners or weak learners, in the schools those days they used to have tutorials where they were given special attention. The tutorial method, there will be special attention and as per the need and requirement, they will diagnose. They will diagnose them and provide extra coaching or extra teaching so that they learn better. Right? Then you have assignments. All of you know what are assignments. What for assignments are given? Assignment, is it just copyright from the book? How should be the assignment? Yes. <laughs> what is assignment? What is the literal meaning? Anybody can Google and tell me. Anybody can Google and tell me what is assignment, meaning of assignment? What is the literal meaning of assign? Assign to give something. Yeah. To give some work to do, that is assignment, whatever work it is. Why should they give assignment? What kind of assignment they should give? Anybody? Yeah. Related to the topic when you teach them, 
some extra information or some related information, if you give additional work for them to do at home, take home activities. Assignments are mostly take home activities where the student will go home and work on them so that they will continue to learn after going home. They will give a project. They will give a project for the children to make a model on this and come back tomorrow. So the child will work on the concept so that the learning keeps continuing after going home and clarifications will be there. The child will learn better by making a model than listening in the classroom about the concept, isn't it? The children when they make, they see the details in the book. They put everything in place so that they learn better. Ask them to write some notes, ask them to make some drawings, some labeling, making models, something like that, write a report on that, make an activity chart, something or the other teachers give. Why? Because children will continue and get more clarification and better learn, continue to learn. You know, they want to engage the children in continuing with the learning. So the assignments are very, should be purposeful, not offhand assignments you give. Don't say go and write one page from the book today three times and come back. That is not the assignment, right? So purposeful and useful and it should give the space for the learners to continue to learn. These are the purposes of assignments. Then you have project work. What is all of you have, must have done by now? Some hundreds of projects. What is the purpose of a project? There will be individual projects, there will be small group projects, there will be large group projects, isn't it? There will be uh, text-based projects, there will be field-based projects, varieties of projects will be there. So depending upon the need and requirement of your concept or a subject or a topic, the projects can be plan small projects also you can plan for children and yourself so these projects will help us to make the students learn better and also involve practically and hands on experience they get with these projects because they get actively involved in the process whatever we teach in the class we cannot ensure their learning even projects are done by ghosts these days thesis is also done by goes these days. But don't do that, right? You, if you want to really learn, do on your own, have hands-on experience. So all the projects, projects work, will make them active, will engage them, will provide them space to learn, make them to clarify doubts, and get more clarification on the things, and they develop a lot of other abilities. Suppose if it is a group project, the team spirit they develop, collaborative working they develop, and you know cooperation they develop, mutually connect to each other, understand each other, empathy they develop, lots of qualities and values you develop amongst the students, which is the more important dimension of these projects. But apart from your engaging practically, hands-on experience, otherwise you will develop a lot of humanistic values, moral values, empathetic values, group relations, interpersonal relations. These all otherwise you cannot develop in a classroom. So, the project is very, very important for the children to develop various other skills other than subject learning. Then you have case study. What is case study? What is case study? Anybody? Okay. Can you give one example? Okay, very nice. Very nice, very nice. So like that each subject will have their own cases. In education we have six small cases of children, you know, the learners, different types of learning, disabled children we have, learning difficulties children we have, some special challenging children we have. So as a case we deal with them. If a slow learner is there, you take them, teacher will take them, handle them and try to help them out. What is basically a case? It has come from medical field. Isn't it? From the medical field, this case study came. What do they do in the medical medical doctor? What do they do when you go to them? They diagnose, right? What do they do? They diagnose. Why they diagnose? Huh? To know the symptoms. To know the symptoms. Why you have some problem? You go with a problem, right? So they ask you why. What is happening with you? So they will know about the symptoms. This is called diagnosis. You will try to find the reasons or factors or causative factors or symptoms, whatever, in different dimensions. 
So once you diagnose what for this is happening like this, this building is there. So somebody can come. Okay? Architectural engineer or somebody will come and see why there is leakage happening. Okay? There is leakage happening. So they will do. They will try to survey it out. But with human beings, we go with the cases. Even case could be an institution. Case could be an individual. Case could be a particular dimension or an aspect, right? So these case studies will help us. The prominent thing in a case study is in depth you will study about it. You will find all the reasons, factors and you know, why these causative factors. Everything once you identify, you will find the solution for that through the intervention or some kind of remedial things. Like if the children are weak, you will find out why the child is not learning. Then you will give them remedial teaching. Then you will see that they learn better and they will improve in their learning. Suppose maths you are weak, English you are weak, social you are weak, whatever you are weak. So the teacher will go for the remedial course for you because they have taken you as a case, diagnosed you, found out the reasons, then they gave you the solution or remedial measures and then they try to rectify the problem. So this is called a case study. It will help you to analyze the situation very intensively, clearly, in depth, so that you will be able to overcome the problem that is fixed with some individual or institution, whatever it is. So like that we can have various case studies where students will develop in-depth, insightful knowledge, understanding about something. Anything. You can send them to an industry as a case study. So you will study about the industry, come back. You can send them to a hospital and come back. You can send them to a pharmaceutical industry, come back. You can send them to a school and come back. So whatever is relevant in your area, these kind of case studies are allotted so that in depth they develop the idea and knowledge about these cases. So once you know thoroughly about these cases, you will be able to understand clearly about various such cases. Okay? You develop the skill and ability to deal with a case and handle a case and know about a case and develop some abilities to deal with the cases. So all those skills, capabilities and intelligence, what not, all these things you develop in-depth knowledge about certain aspects. So like that it's always good to give in-depth knowledge, provide some case studies for the students. Right? So that's why they do on their own. You are not going anywhere with the case studies. They are dealing with the situation. Then you have programmed instruction. What is programmed instruction? Today all our computer games are based on programmed instruction. What is programmed instruction? It is already pre-designed with a reinforcement. In all the programmed instructions, there will be reinforcement. Like if you do correct, you will get claps, you will get score, you will get smile, you will get something, something, something. They design software engineers, they design these games. Through the games, they will reinforce you with some kind of reward. So this reward motivates you. Why this reinforcement? To motivate. Even if you play small game also, small game when you play also. If you have some score, you develop more interest than just playing it. Isn't it? So people will do lot of play lot of games. So they keep some competition. They keep some scores, isn't it? In carrom board you are playing, or some volleyball you play. Something you play. You win or lose. You know this is a competition where there is some kind of motivation for you to win or lose. Similarly, in the learning process also, there should be some reward. There should be some reinforcement. What is reinforcement? You are trying to make them to continue to learn, further learn with the motivation with some kind of reward, right? So this is reinforcement, you know, provided by Skinner. It is BF Skinner has given this operant conditioning method, yes? Operant conditioning method, he has given, so Skinner. So based on this, you know, conditioning theory, all computing games have come up today. So all computer games, small, small automated games, these are all based on these principles. There are other one memory base, what is that conditioning, anybody? You have learned all this, right? Conditioning theories. There are classical conditioning. There is operant conditioning. Hmm? What is classical conditioning? I'll give you one example so that you will never forget in life what is classical conditioning, right? So, see, every day you develop a lot of habits in you, right? Huh? Not one. Yeah. You repeat it, you know, number of times when you repeat. See, you don't know Usmania University first day, some of you. When you came here first day, second day it has become little easy. 
on 10th day it will be just cake walk for you to come here. So it is just practice and repetition makes you perfect. Like in mathematics, you, you use lot of formulae. If you do 10 problems, the formula gets by heart it for you. You don't need to by heart it. If you do 100 problems, it becomes cake walk. Practice makes you perfect, no doubt about it. That is all based on our classical conditioning theories. I'll give one example of classical conditioning so that you will remember it. It's the Watsonian example, Watson, what he did. He took an 11-month child and gave a fur doll. Okay, gave a fur doll. Whenever the child was touching the fur doll, he gave a huge sound, bell sound. So with the bell sound, the child got fearful, thinking that the sound is coming from the for a doll. So she stopped going to the doll or touching the doll. So you can develop fear, you can develop positive behavior or negative behavior. Anything you can condition. You know, some teachers beat. As soon as they come to the classroom, they hold a cane. And whoever make noise, they will beat black and blue. So all children will sit silent by looking at the cane of the teacher. So they get conditioned to the teacher's behavior in the classroom. They respond back. Stimulus and response. What is the stimulus here? Teacher and stick is the stimulus. Response is pillar of silence. Right? So like that, every day you develop habits of eating, brushing, clothing. These are from childhood. Parents have started giving us, conditioned us to do something. You go to temple. Why? You go to masjid. Why? You, you do so many things every day as a habit. So these all habits are formed because of Continuous conditioning by somebody and also practice every day, repeat every day, they become habits. So you get conditioned to that. You drink every day morning 6 o'clock tea. You get conditioned to that time of stimulus in the brain to drink. Otherwise you say I get headache if I don't drink coffee or tea. Because you got conditioned your brain to stimulate at that particular point of time. So otherwise you get headache. It is all conditioning. So like that we should condition our children so that they learn. So we keep some timing, 9 to 4 o'clock. They get conditioned to come at 9, go by 4 o'clock. Lunch break, 1 o'clock. Without bell, we feel hungry because every day we got that kind of conditioning of the time of eating lunch. So this is all stimulus and response. Stimulus and response. There, in between stimulus and response, you have reinforcement is given. So that is the difference between classical and operative conditioning. So when you talk about the classroom, Teachers have to use wherever it is necessary. Classical conditioning, if you need, you use that theory. If you need operant conditioning, you use that. Many teachers give some smileys, some scores, some, you know, different stars. All this, they give the reinforcement for the children who get 10 on 10, 10 on 9, so that they get motivated and reinforced to continue to work hard in the classroom or repeat the same kind of behavior. We also call this operant shaping behavior. To shape the child's behavior, you need to give them some kind of reward. It could be verbal reward, it could be material reward, but better avoid material reward. If you give chocolate, they get used to that chocolate only. You should not give chocolate. Instead, as teachers are doing, give star, give some smiley, then no problem. If you give chocolate, again, they get used to that material reinforcement. Always avoid material reinforcement. Even with children, you should avoid such material reinforcement, so that they grew better personalities, right? So reinforcement, all of us need, right? If you do something good, if your parents say, wonderful, you have done excellent job, it was really good help for me today, so you feel very happy. Next time, you tend to come back and help mother. If they don't express any such kind of things, you feel, what is this boring? Every time I do, no appreciation. So some appreciation, verbal, moral, or any kind of appreciation that works as a reinforcement, so that we will repeat, tend to repeat that behavior or continue to go with that kind of behavior. So like that, you will have, you can modify the desirable behavior. If it is not desirable, punishment should be given. What punishment? Beating up. No. What is negative? We don't use the word punishment in operant conditioning. We use it as negative reinforcement. What is negative reinforcement? They may give some question like that. Suppose if I delay the reward, See, you tell the children in the evening, unless you complete your homework, I will not allow you to watch cartoon movie. I don't allow you to play some game. What is that? You are giving them reward, but not instantly giving it. You have delayed that reward. Delaying reward is negative reinforce, not punishment. People think negative means punishment. No punishment with 
Skinner, he never agreed for punishment. He said, delay the reward so that sometime they have to withhold, you know, for the reward. That withholding itself is like a, delaying itself is like a negative kind of a reinforcement. So these are some of the theories. Like that you have humanistic theories, you have phenomenological theories. I don't know whether all this is given in your syllabi or not. Anything that you have, My time is up to 4 o'clock, 2 to 4, no? My time is 2 to 4. So I am still with my time left to some more time. Any doubts you have? Because I don't want to take this paper and go on barking at you. I thought I would just make you to stimulate, reflect, react, start thinking, brainstorming. What is brainstorming? There is one method called brainstorming. What is learning? What is education? What is instruction? All these distinctions you should know. Anything you need some clarification? See these maxims of teaching, principles of teaching. You know what is principle of motivation? Yes? What I have been doing from the last one and a half hour? What I am doing? I am trying to motivate all of you to learn on your own. To learn on your own. Because today the order of the day is self-guided, self-guided, learner-centric methodology. No more teacher-guided learning is good. Because once you involve only, you learn better. If I teach 100 hours also, your learning will be minimal. If you learn for 4 hours also, learning will be complete. So reason why today the order of the day is to go with the self-guided, self-directed and child-centric learning pedagogies. Then activity, learning by doing, interest, all these I spoke to you, linking with the life. I told you, take some examples from real time. Connect them to the day-to-day -day life. Am I doing that? Yes. Yes. So that's how you need to use it. Then principle of definite aim. You should not just, uh, you know, bush beat around the bush. Particular goal you should have, particular aim you should have. What, are, what is the difference between goal, aim, objective, Anybody? Ideal? Any idea? No idea? I think I have covered all this. These domains, you want to have some clarity? Cognitive domain? Affective domain? Psychomotor domain. You want some clarification of this? Yes? What is this? Head. Head related. All mind head related is all 